Honorable Speaker, our laws are quite clear. Our penal code still has outlawed issues to do with homosexuality. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, it was absurd that a good number in the Supreme Court did find it fit to allow a habit or uh, something that has, is already outlawed under our laws that you could now allow people to associate. What happens tomorrow, Honorable Speaker, if all the pickpockets in our streets decide now that they have rights as pickpockets and they want to form the association of Nairobi street pocket <laughs> thieves or even robbers, bank robbers. Tomorrow, robbers may decide that we have certain rights under the Constitution, the right to association. But, Honorable Speaker, the Constitution also says that your rights are limited. The West has never been a moral authority. These are the people who came and enslaved us. And they came and colonized us. Yes. And they came and treated us like animals. Yes. And now they want to tell us to behave like animals. The next thing that's going to come up... Honorable Farah Malim, which uh, animals engage in homosexuality? No. You are right. You are right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I withdraw that bit. I withdraw that bit in the interest and the respect for the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom never engages in that. But the next thing they're going to tell us is that somebody, somebody has a right, a man has a right to marry a woman. They want to tell us that a woman has a right, sorry, to marry another man, or a woman has a right to marry a, a woman. What do we, to my women who are married do to do? What is there? God has created a man and a woman. It's there in all the Abrahamic scriptures. It's in Islam. It's in Christianity. It's in Judaism. If we allow them to take over our lives, we have allowed them for, for, for far too long for them to exploit us and to dehumanize us as human beings. On this, we will say no. If they're going to come up with the travel, what they call restrictions, keep your country Keep your cultures, keep your nonsense to yourselves. And I'm talking to the West in this case here. It is quite clear from our books that some of these things in LGBTQ are actually outlawed. And therefore, anything associated with those characters cannot be allowed to stand against the morals of the people of Kenya. Whether it's sodomy, whether it's lesbianism, whether it's queerness, whether it is anything that is outward practiced by these characters who say they have human rights. They may have their rights in the private. And I'm sorry, I shiver and shunder when I imagine what they do in private because it is totally repugnant, especially to us Africans. It's also important to condemn those who come with these ideas. And this is why today we celebrate the president of Uganda, Yoweri Museveni. We celebrate the late Robert Mugambi of Uganda. And sometimes it actually appears Idi Amin himself was a saint. Because these are the things he was condemning those days. In spite of being incited by these same Europeans and Americans to kill a few Ugandans. Therefore... We as Africans must stand up. We must stand to be counted. We must tell these Europeans and Americans that for the little money they are enticing us with, I'm told they're even offering relief food to Kenyans so that you can legalize things like this one. They have been approaching our organizations, including the Kenya National Human Rights Commission, offering tokens so that they can promote rights of such characters. Thank heavens, these commissions and these organizations have said no to their little tokens. Let them keep their bad habits in Europe, in America. Let us, as Africans, keep what we consider to be morally upright and suitable for our society. Speaker, I am a watcher and I'm a fan of National Geographic, which has documentaries. You see male animals, 
being attracted to females, fighting to death. I have never seen a male animal right, raising huh, to satisfy itself sexually on another male animal. So what are they telling us, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, this country, and I want to hear the leadership of this country speak against this. In fact, Mr. Speaker, I think the president of this country should write immediately to the Attorney General to appeal this ruling. It cannot be bearable. Yes, Kenya is a Christian nation. It has Muslims. It has all denominations. But Mr. Speaker, our constitution is supreme. 11. Explicitly say this. The Ashpal guy spoke about it, his commission, the bombers one and two, they were against this. How can we then, 2023, admit the gays and lesbians of this world to rule this country? Mr. Speaker, on this seat where I sit from, I'm telling people who I represent from Mavoko, if you see gays and lesbians, tell them to be wary of me, because I'm going to tell you what you are going to do with them. So are Kenyans. We cannot allow that, Mr. Speaker. We must condemn this ruling by all means. Even if it means us calling those judges to apologize to Kenyans and say they judge and they ruled when they were not sober, Mr. Speaker, then is when we are going to agree with their ruling. However, Mr. Speaker, this House has a role to legislate and make laws that befit this country. Let's not forget our mandate. Let us stand by the virtues and Look at the ruling by the Supreme Court, whichever way it was, has gone against the Constitution, Article 11. And therefore, it means that judgment which was made by the Supreme Court is null and void because it is against the Constitution. And there is nothing else we can say about it. We will still consider in this House that that law never existed. That judgment was never made. We just consider it as if there was nothing done. As if the Supreme Court judge, as if there were six, if there were seven, they sat in vain. Whatever the decision they made in that particular judgment, it was done in vain. Because Article 11 is very clear. No same-sex marriage is allowed in this country. No same-sex relationship is allowed in this country. No same-sex penetration is allowed in this country, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, when these particular courts declare or presume to be making a declaration that they are making a judgment, they are giving a ruling that we allow these people to have a relationship, we allow these people to, to, to look at one another, we allow these people to have some association. Mr. Speaker, that is going contrary to the Constitution. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I would want to say, just like what my senior said, do we need to tell these judges to revoke. Do we need...